Welcome, Lee here from Play Guitar Academy with another Why They Work Lick video. Today I'm going to show you five easy ways to take any guitar lick and make it your own. Whether it's a lick you've learned from someone else or one you came up with yourself, these tips are going to help you add your own personal style, make it truly stand out. But before we get started to make the most out of these lick lessons, we need to open up the entire fretboard and stop playing in just one or two patterns. Click the link in the description, download my free Big Four Scale Pattern Worksheet. This is a great resource to help you feel confident playing all over the neck and take control of your solos. Okay, let's get started with licks. We're gonna be playing over a C7 vamp today. A vamp is a one chord backing track. So just C7 through the whole thing and remember, C7 is dominant, has a flat seventh in it. So we have C, E, G, and B flat. We're gonna start with a standard lick. This is the lick that we're gonna be creating all the other ones from. Uh, this is gonna be a blues lick in C uh, that takes advantage of the minor and major thirds. Let's take a look here. So in our bass lick, we start with the C on the 10th fret of the D string. Then we're gonna go up to the major six. So we're gonna go to the A string and slide up two sliding up to the 12th fret, that's a very light sound. Then we go back to the C. Now we're going to the G string on the eighth fret. There's our minor third, go up to the fourth, which is the 10th. But now we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Now we're gonna start using that minor third to major third that's very common in blues. So we're gonna go to the eighth fret, which is E flat or minor third, to the ninth fret, E. That's the note that matches the chord perfectly. And now we're going back down the minor pentatonic scale, C at the 10th on D. B flat on the eighth on D, and G at the 10th fret on the A string. That's the first half of our lick. The second half of the lick starts off like the first, C, 12 on A, back to C, to the eighth fret, the E flat, up to the fourth, 10, but now we end with a minor third to major third little lick here. That's eight, nine on G, and then ending on the C note. So the whole thing sounds like this. So now that we have the bass lick, what we're gonna be doing is taking that lick and making small changes to it. It's amazing how a very tiny change, which to you doesn't sound like anything, makes the lick sound totally different to the listener. And that gives us a huge opportunity to play with all the different licks that we have, make slight changes out of them, and create hundreds, thousands of licks with these small changes. And that's what I'm talking about today. The first change we're gonna be doing is timing. So the first four notes are exactly the same as our first lick, but the timing is different. Let's take a look. We're gonna play a quarter note on the first C, and then we're gonna have a rest on two. We don't play anything, and then quickly slide up to 12, and then back to the 10. Instead of, this will be. We do the same thing on the eighth fret to the 10th fret on the G string. That's on the and of four and then on one of the second measure. So the whole thing sounds like this. Very different, we didn't change any notes, just the timing of this. Now let's take a look at this measure. Uh, we we played that 10, but we go into a rest, we're not playing now. Where in the other measure we, we were playing eighth notes. Now we have this rest. We have triplets that come in here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we rest on the first beat of the of the triplet on beat three. Then we come in with E flat to E, C, B flat, G. It has a really cool sound. Instead of, this is, kind of is a waterfall of notes at the end. So now in the second half of this lick, uh, we're gonna use the same notes again, 10 on, D, 12 on A, 10 on D, 8 on G, but it's the timing that's different. Where it sounded like this before, now we're gonna spend three beats on just the first note. One, two, three. And the last beat is where we're gonna fit all the other notes in. In fact, we're doing it as a triplet. One, one, two, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So it sounds like this. One, two, three. Finally, we're gonna end this off very similar to the first lick before. So the whole new lick sounds like this.
These slight timing changes mean everything, and this is gonna be a cool lick for you to play. Part number two, we're gonna take the same lick we've been playing, but we're gonna change it this time using a little phrasing. We're gonna make it sound more vocal. Things we're gonna do is we're gonna add some rests in there, some places where a singer might have, need to take a breath, but also we're gonna add some vibrato and some bending to this. So let's start with the first note. That's the 10th fret on the D, just like all the other ones. We're gonna give it a heavy BB King style vibrato. Go down to the A string as well, and then a little rest, and we're gonna to start to go up the minor pentatonic scale from, from now. So we start with a C to the E flat, which is eighth on the G, to the 10th fret, which is F, that's the fourth of the scale. And we'll give that some heavy vibrato. So it sounds like this. At this point, we're gonna rest for a beat and a half. We're gonna do a half step bend on the 10th fret on the G string, back to the 10 without a bend, to the eighth fret on the same string, minor third two, and we're gonna come back to the beginning again, give that little heavy vibrato from 10 to 12 on the A. Finally, we'll end this lick with the minor third, two heavy vibratos on that. This is a great way to take an original lick add some rests in there, add some bending, add some vibrato, and it changes the whole thing completely and it really gets people's attention. In section number three, we're going to actually modify some of these notes. We're gonna add some outside sounds. We're gonna add some passing tones in this one. So we start off with our regular C at the 10th fret on the G string, and right away, 11th fret on the A. Ooh, that's not good, that's the minor six, but it goes up into the major six, which does sound like. So we're having a little tension and release right away. We do that two times. Uh, the rhythm is more eighth notes now than it was quarter notes in our original lick. Next, we're gonna go to the 10th fret on the G string, the eighth fret on the, on the B string, and then we have our minor third to major third Outside sound as well too. That's eight to nine on G and we come back to our original note on the 10th fret of the D string. That sounds like this. Already has a jazzier sound to it as well. Now when we start on the second part of the lick, we do the same thing for the first half of the measure. But as we go higher, this time we're gonna do a, take a chromatic approach. We're gonna start on the minor third. This is the eighth fret on the G string to the major third the ninth fret on the G string, to the fourth, the 10th fret on the G string, to a blues scale note, to the sharp four or flat five, the 11th fret on the G string. That is our F sharp. It wants to resolve up to the eighth fret on the B string, there's our G note. So we go from our G, that's the fifth, up to the major sixth. Always sounds great over a dominant seventh chord. And then we're gonna finish off with the minor third, major third, that's eighth to ninth on the G string, and then our root note back on the 10th on the D. In number four, we're gonna do something drastic. Everything we've been doing up to this point is taking one little nitpicky thing and changing it and make t adjusting timing those things. What if we just wanted to flip the whole thing all together? So what I'm gonna do in this is I'm gonna take measure two and put it before measure one. Our original licks sound like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this part. And I'm gonna make that first. How about that? Whole different sound to that look. The second part, I did exactly what I just played. I played measure two again. And to make it sound great, instead of just playing the same thing over and over again, I went back to something we did in the timing, this little triplet. I went 12th fret on A, 10th fret on D, 8th fret on the G, and back to the C right there. So the whole thing sounds like this.
very cool look. Doesn't sound anything like the first one. Uh, and we didn't really change much. We just made some big flips. Finally, in number five, we're gonna do something really, really fun. We're gonna be changing the durations of the notes. So we're gonna take the notes that we already have, which are mostly, as I look through this, mostly eighth notes and quarter notes, and we're gonna let them ring a little bit more, let them last a little bit. We're gonna use a little vibrato too to make it interesting. So we're gonna start with 10th fret, the same note we always start with, the 10th fret on the D string. This is our C note. And we're gonna let that ring this time for three beats. One, two, three. And then we're gonna take what's normally our next two notes, the 12th fret on the A and the eighth fret on the G, and we're gonna play them as eighth notes, quicker. So long, short, long. When we have this note, the eighth fret on the G, this is our E flat, our minor third, we're gonna let it ring and it's gonna last for another three beats, but with vibrato. So the whole thing so far, At the end of this measure, we're gonna to go to the 10th fret. This is our fourth, and we're gonna give it a full bend. Back to the measure three now. Our first note again, we're gonna let this ring for the whole measure. So a lot of long notes here. And finally, in the last measure, we're gonna do some bends. We're gonna, for a quarter note, the 10th fret bent up full, that's the F bending up to a G. Our minor third bending up to a major third, a little quarter step bend on the eighth fret of the G string. And then finally, for our last two beats of the measure, our root note. So the whole thing. Thanks for playing along today and thanks to all of our Academy members for PlayGuitarAcademy.com we're tearing into the tab and guitar profiles and they're changing all their licks to get hundreds of new licks. From this lesson right now, don't forget to download my free big four scale pattern worksheet. It's gonna make it all easier for you. And as always, let me know what you think in the comments. Have a great practice. I'll see you in the next lick video. Bye-bye.